have one is Finch here, and I know I'm four turns late, but um, I'm going to bring you guys S versus HT for open, and I'm going to pause this and come back in one turn and really start my narration. This is on fresh line, though, but I have to. Okay, I'm back. And you just missed a wisp on that wisp cup. But let's go back to turn one. We're only five turns out. But anyway, it looks like HT's bringing a dramp up balance. Kind of anti meta game, I guess. It is nice, but it's not a great Pokemon. And just the defensive core with Piloswine, Vaporeon, Golbat, which is a bad Pokemon objectively. Whereas Ask is a pretty cool offensive team. Yeah. Kind of interesting that he's going with um, Miss Mages and um, Sigilyph, two of the Pokemon that are most often trapped by Sneasel, yeah. which is running pretty rampant right now. But hey, um, he's not facing against Sneasel, so it looks like the matchup is doable if he could break through. I think he can break through with a Vaporeon. So yeah, so I had to take a drink, but um. Anyway, it looks like it, she's gotten off to a good start. Um, yeah, I'll just go back one more time. I'll go through the most. Turn one, Dreddy gone on Golbat. Golbat wants to stand and cripple it. So then um, S goes to Kling Kling on the Toxic, but then doubles back to Dreddy gone, predicting something else, but he gets super fanged. Then we see a Toxic again. So it looks like H she has the early advantage. And we see a shift gear, but the Rodent comes in, so it's going to force it out. And we're going to see a Willow on the Whimsicott, followed by a Hex into the Mages. So Esk has already taken quite a bit of damage, but then he finally gets the Dreddy gone in. On a pilot's one, but is it faster? Can it set up rocks? And is it worth losing your um your Dredigon? Um I think he's probably gonna go to Kling Clang or Incineroar. As he goes to Kling Clang on the crash, taking fifteen percent leftover, so he's probably gonna end up just being forced out here unless he wants to chip it. Oh, and he goes for Magnet Rise and um H does a nice job predicting that. I didn't think about that. Good good idea there. We're gonna see the Whimscut here again on a volt switch. There's no ground type on the S team. It's actually quite weak to Vika Volt, somewhat weak to this road, I'm even. Um, Vika Volt, sorry. Um, I'm just finishing up lunch, so pardon my voice for a minute or two here. But um, it looks as if um, HG is a clear early game advantage, just given how he's been playing compared to Ask. Ask might be a bit tilted after his RU open loss to King UU. Kind of unlucky in the second game. He should have probably won to set 2 0. But um, that's how it is, unfortunately enough. Um, Anyway, this is a pretty relevant game um, for Open, I guess. Although, HG kind of is already qualified, and I'm not sure if S can qualify anymore, but it'll have a lot of ramifications on seeding if HG wins, gets two more points. We're going to see um, the goal bat here. I imagine we see a Super Fang, but instead he goes for the straightforward Brave Bird. Just not wanting to overdo it, he's got a good position now. And he does 20% to Kling Kling, which just kind of bounces off, especially with leftovers. Now we see a double to the Miss Magius on a Super Fang. Okay. I guess that's cool if this is Wisp, um, because then you eat the Brave Bird and you cripple it for the remainder of the game, thus likely forcing it out. I think the Drampa might come in here, but instead we're going to see the Piloswine on a nasty plot. Okay, not nice play there. I guess we'll see um, the Drampa now. I, I can't imagine. Uh, I don't know if this is max HP, it might have a chance of surviving the plus 2Z. I'm not going to go on Calcare right now, but I mean, I assume that HG is either doing the Calcare or just clicking Drampa. If I have Wisp, I definitely click it here, but he might not have Wisp given how he played last turn. Um, and the thing is that the second move on this is oftentimes Thunderbolt, so I feel as if the Drampa is likely to just wall this, but maybe it's Hidden Power Fighting, which could come in handy here, although plus two Hidden Power Fighting would only do a bit over half the Pilot Spine, honestly. Power Gem. Okay, well, that um didn't really work out for S side at all. Um, an odd move to have, but I suppose that it is cool for Incineroar, actually. It does a bit more than Hidvar fighting. Alright, fair enough, but unfortunately it's only going to do 29% for Pilot on a plus 2, leaving S to 6 to 5, uh, a 5 to 6 spot. With this Kling Kling that, well, could Magnet Rise, we can't really threaten. I feel as if he has to play a bit more up-tempo. Like, I, I expect to double to Incineroar here. And, no, Gear Grad. Okay, well, at least he's getting some chip on the Rotom, so later he could set up and potentially win. So that's some progress there. We've got 31% on the Rotom. It may very well have no way of becoming it. It's rare. Yapa Berry is used, but not common. Comes a cut here, and a Hex, no, a Volt Switch. Okay, that's fine. Probably predicting Incineroar, perhaps. And just getting momentum. No really loss in that play. I expect a goal bet here, although I wouldn't be shocked if Pylos one came out. I don't think it'll go to anything else. Wouldn't really make much sense. Um... Nevertheless, we're going to be waiting for HG to click his move here. Excuse me. 
Um, yeah, so I played for Snake actually in an hour and a half, which is cool. Um, pretty excited for my game against Bro Cop. I got some heat that I'm ready to bring. Nice team. I hope they'll come out on top. I've had a bit of a rough weekend so far. Just with some unfortunate luck and sloppy play in my UU Open series. And then my teammates gotten beaten up a bit, but that's okay. All good and fun thus far. I'm Snake and Open. But yeah, I can't really complain. Um, anyway, I think we're just going to see a U-turn here from Ask if he has it. Um, I hasn't asked the move. I guess we could see Sigalith come in as well. Druddy gone instead, which is easily going to be too KO'd by this Braver. It appears to be showing as if it's some Life Orb Sheer Force Druddy gone. Another Brave Bird. I'm really not fond of the Kling Kling taking damage, as I feel like it's clearly the win condition in this game. But maybe he's playing it as if the Sigalith is the win condition. But if it's not Wild Charge, then it's not a win condition anyway. It's alright, let's wait and see what happens here. I mean, Wild Charge at plus one would do in the 60s, maybe 70, if I had to guess. Um, Skull's probably going to do around 40, 45. Hmm. Uh, just kind of waiting here, honestly. All right, time is ticking down for Ask. I'm sorry, it's just kind of a dull game at this point. I feel like HG's clearly been the better player. Mm. Wild Charge up doing 68, and we're probably going to see a Scald. It's going to burn or not. That's a big thing. No burn. All right, so that leaves the Clean Tongue at 15%. Um, let's see, let's go back and turn, see how much recoil it took. 82 to... Took 30% recoil doing 68. So therefore, doing 40, it'll take enough to die. Yeah, so this should die. All right. Well, let's see what happens here. Uh, yep, and it's going to be a double down here. Okay, so the Vaporeon being out of the way is actually really nice for Incineroar. However, while it's nice for Incineroar, it is true that the Passimian can just revenge kill it pretty much whenever. And on top of that, if it's not um, Incineum Z, then Trampa could live a hit and do a ton back with a potentially strong special attack. If it's a, even if it's a sword jump variant, if it's a pivot variant, then it's not going to win the game, but it will be able to check Trampa a bit. Sigalith looks pretty good here, actually, but Scarf knockoff from Passimian is still quite threatening. If it's like one of those like cosmic power variants, perhaps that's the only chance of actually winning the game. And we're just going to see Iron Head, which is a very odd move to be on a Passimian, truth be told. I'm not really sure if I'm too fond of that. Hmm. So we're going to see the Incineroar of the double down, uh, of the dead um, Whimsicott and a Swords Dance here. So I imagine this will be able to take out the Pylosoin either with Flare Blitz or a Z move, depending on. It could be probably Ground Yim Zeke, honestly, could kill from this range, I think, yes. But uh, more common and slightly more consistent Incineum Z seems to be fairly likely on this build, seeing as Kling Kling doesn't really need Rhydon. Be worn out, Steelix already gets worn out, etc. And you already have the lure, likely life orb, sheer force, ready gone as the salt rocker. So I just don't think that. Flare Blitz, yep, that's going to kill the Rotom. And now we'll see the Passimians of Revenge kill. I imagine you just click the close combat here. Um, I imagine the play for Ask is to go to Sigilyph, but he could fodder off the Dreddy Gun if you feel he has um, that leeway. I just don't think he does personally. So we're going to see the Sigilyph here. Close combat, yep, that's going to do a mere 20%. Um, do we see a double box at Incineroar here? Or do we see it attack? I think we might very well see it attack. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, I think we're just going to see like a psychic or air slash here. Hmm. Now, Drampa might be some assault fish. Shit. Like, literally. Um, this actually is quite a complicated scenario because if S gets a few turns right, then in theory, he very well could win this game with the combination of Sigalith and Incineroar. But if HC gets one like big turn right, then it all falls apart. And we're going to see the Drudigon here. I really don't think that was a play. I mean, what are you predicting with the Drudigon? The Drampa? I guess he was predicting the Drampa and trying to get rocks. Up. No, I think that you just stay in with Sigalith there. Well, at least go into Cinero, but anyway, I, that now it looks a lot harder for S. She's going to be in the to get every single turn right and have the right setup with Sigalith. Um, a Life Orb Psychic should kill this Colbat. It's more likely than not physically defensive. So actually, oh, well, I guess not. 52%. All right, so now if this isn't Roost, uh, even if it is Roost, I think this is over. Because Ice Shard, it's not Ice Shard range, and Drampa should 1v1 it from here. And Passimian's U-turn probably kills. Yes, yeah, so this is pretty much game over. Um, likely a mix of the Golbat, or perhaps this isn't life form, but rather Focus Bash, which would make some sense in if he's using an offensive team with nowhere else Carfer. Yeah, speed control with Wimscott, which is actually fine speed control on you, but if your team is this offensive and you don't have checks to all the common one conditions, like, for example, opposing Kling Klang with a little chip on Incineroar is actually really problematic. I, I mean, Sash doesn't really help with that, but just like an example. Would be really nice. Dazzling Gleam is a very odd move to see, but anyway, we're gonna see this take it, the Drampa take it out. Looks like it might be some assault vest shit given that damage, but I'm really not sure how bulky Trampa is in all honesty. It's not very common. Incineroar is probably gonna get this kill with Incineum Z. Nope, it's Tectonic Rage instead, which is fine. And now we're gonna see a close combat from Simi to take it out, giving HG a 1 0 lead in the series. As I finish my Coke Zero. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, 1 0 for HT. Um, pretty interesting game. I liked both teams, but I liked the HG's a bit more, just seemed more consistent. Whereas S was a bit more, um, ballsy, if you will. I'm not going to close out of this until the next game, because my snake team will show in the window, because I had it loaded up already. So I don't really want that to be disclosed. So I'm just going to keep it like this until the next game starts. Hopefully it will start in a second. But yeah, um, I'm going to pause till it starts. Alright, well, um, we're going to be seeing a very interesting team out of S here. Um, it's going to be Slowbro, Vanillux, Ditto, um, Rotom, Incineroar, Steelix. It's like some kind of weird semi-balance. Yeah, I think that's what you'd call it, like semi-balance with Slowbro, defense support. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just going to use another kind of oddly conservative yet packing a punch team here, it looks like something out of Lax's team builder, honestly, to me, with the Vaporeon Torterra kind of defensive core. And then the Simeon Speed Control and Vika, Vika Volt is just like a bike of Vika, whatever. I don't even remember what I'm calling it anymore. I have so many fucking ways of saying it at the start of it. But yeah, I'm going to see Passimian on Rotom. I imagine we just see U turn and a Will O Wisp here. Um, I think Passimian just U turns out to Altaria, if I had to guess, but you could see Vika Volt too. I certainly wouldn't go to it, though. I think Altaria is just the safest option. Worst case scenario, you forfeit um, a turn to Vanillox, which is indeed problematic. However, you get Chip on the Rotom, and you just get your Silval Sil Valley Steel in, which you can proceed the parting shot with. So you get momentum after taking a uh, Blizzard or two, which isn't too problematic in the early stages of this game, I feel. You turn out the Vika Vault. All right. Not a huge fan of that play, as I said, because that, that allows you to fold in. That allows Mill Shoot in two, but also Incineroar. It also takes damage on something that's your main wall breaker in this game, in my opinion. Because the, the answer to it is Steelix, which could be an answer if you're not like sub and it's toxic. But even then, I mean, Z Bug, HP, potential HP fire slash ground, all could be quite troublesome. So we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Vault switched in 12% to the vehicle vault. Confirming that likely is some HP investment, or this might be more of a utility rotom. They don't all run max special attack. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Um Hmm. Okay. Let's take some time. I imagine we see instant roar though, although Steelix isn't out of the question. Instead we see vanilla, it's likely confirming that it's a specs variant, which actually does make quite a bit of sense with the ditto. I, I think specs probably is a roll to kill if it doesn't kill it always. 
but probably a good chance. I think it's worthwhile, especially seeing as Avika Volk confirms its leftovers. I mean, there's no way it can kill this Vanillix in one shot. In fact, Thunderbolt probably doing about 70-75%, if even. I Meaning you probably can live with just Stealth Wax. Anyway, so Volley's going to come out and take the Blizzard for 27%. It's either like modest Never Melt Ice or Specs given that damage. Personally, if I'm asked, I, I don't bother staying in the fish here just because A, Flamethrower is going to do about half to you. And B, parting shot momentum into Simeon, capturing the Vortex with U-turn and whatnot. I think you just get out and then try to get that sequence going again. And he goes to Ditto, which is a nice pivot considering that you could parting shot. However, if she catches him with the Flamethrower, which makes it a bit less of an appropriate pivot. Now we're going to see a parting shot. Yup, in Altaria. And we're going to see the Vanillix once again come in. And claim another 30 some odd percent on a Silvali Steel, if I had to guess. However, we might see the Vaporeon trying to come in on a Blizzard. So we could see a Freeze Dry from Esky as well. It's a bit of a mind game. Actually, I think I'd click Freeze Dry here. It's a bit safer. And also, you could spam it after this turn when Hail stops. Yep, I think we're going to see the. Oh, we're going to see the Blizzard. Nope, and it's going to do a bit on a 30. And then no Hail Chip. So yeah. Okay, so this is a 32. So now another Blizzard in Hail, assuming the damage continues after the turn, is going to kill the Silvali. However, um, this turn, there's no way it's going to die. It's just like some min-max stuff, in which I think is highly unlikely given the usual damage variation on Savali. So I think we're going to see another pivot here from Ask. Maybe we'll see Slowbro or Incineroar. Slowbro it is on the Vaporeon, which is quite good for HT seeing as he's going to make an attempt to heal up that Silvali with a wish. And we're going to see Toxic here. Nicely done. If there's like some Z Water or Fire Blast stuff coming from this Slowbro, I'd imagine it'll be clicked here, but I don't think that's entirely likely. And there's also a chance that the Vaporeon stays in and clicks Toxic or Heal Bell, just to kind of get it off. We're going to see Savali Steel. Ditto. Nope. Pretty useless turn there, and that makes up for a lot of the progress. So therefore, now I'd say that S is um, a bit behind, especially if he lets this get Toxic, but no parting shot. So the Vika Vault's going to come in, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. At least, probably a bit better than getting Toxic on that turn. So you just go to Steelix. But instead, Torterra comes in. Okay, I don't really know what I think of this, if you want me to be honest. Um, we could see the Vanillix coming in, just try to kind of take advantage of the rocks, get some chip off. We could also see Rotom come in, figuring if it's going to rock, you might as well cripple it and whatnot. Instead, we're going to see it stay in. Fire Blast! Okay, so he had Fire Blast, but he didn't use it into Silvali, which... It was baffling in my opinion, because he really just killed it. That was a very, very, very predictable supply a couple turns back. But um, regardless of that um, potential oversight on Esk's part, he does get the burn with Fire Blast on a Torterra, which is quite annoying for HTC. He has now he can no longer really directly threaten to kill the Rotom in one hit, meaning that Defog is going to be free at one point or another. And also, he doesn't threaten the Vanillix as much to the point where it will 2-KO it. So therefore, switching it in potentially here or later on could be a bit more free. However, he's going to go to Steelix to try to get his own up, and he's going to meet the Vika Vault, which could be good or bad, depending on if it's Substitute, HP Fire, etc., and if the Steelix is toxic or not. Um, but I imagine we just will see Stealth Rocks on this turn. Seems fairly likely to me. But let's wait and see. We're going to see the HP Fire or Ground, and we're going to see Stealth Rocks as well. It's going to do 53%, which is the exact percent that Steelix is at right now, so it's likely a roll to kill. Which personally is one that I would deem worthwhile and click, but I could see either player switching out or changing up moves here, just given the um, intricacies of the scenario and the long haul ramifications as well. Um, personally, though, if I'm asked, I'm much more inclined to switch than if I was HG and I'd be inclined to change moves. I think actually HP Fire is perfectly fine here. Worst case scenario, you get Stealth Rock damage and a little chip on the Incineroar. I don't think it's worth risking anything unless you've got um, if you got Substitute, then I click it. Nobody runs the worst, Steelix, so yeah. Um, hmm. Pardon me. Um. Alright, Esk is taking his time. I think that AHG has just been the better player thus far in the series. It hasn't even been anything like too over-the-top flashy. More so just a bit more crisp and optimal with his plays, turn and turn out. But as you can come back, certainly. We're going to see Slowbro, which is bizarre. But it's going to come in on the HP. Oh, ground. Oh, and it's a jack button. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Okay. I applaud that effort. So now we're going to see Incineroar. Um, perhaps because Vanillax cannot kill this at full. And now that Zothrock is up, it's in danger zone for Vika Vault. So yeah, it's a nice play. Maybe we'll see a Flare Blitz here. And instead we can see a Sword Dance on a hard Basimian. Nicely done by HG to come, kind of come back at that. 
So thus, the net of the sequence will essentially be Stealth Rock on Incineroar, plus Stealth Rock on this likely Slowbro or Rotom switch in, in conjunction with U turn chip and momentum for HT, making it very favorable for him. But ooh, ooh, Eski's gonna predict the U turn with the Incineroar and stay in, and he's likely gonna get a kill here. Altaria's gonna come in, I already see Flare Blitz, knock off, and it's gonna kill Altaria. Oh, very, very nice play by S there. Take advantage of a predictable um, attempt at gaining momentum there. And that's going to put him in a 6-5 to five position, which really is a nice play. I was kind of expecting some more stuff like that in the first game. But it looks like he's finally coming out alive here. So that's cool. Now, are we going to see another U-turn here? Is Incineroar going to stay in? No, we're going to see the slow bro. And are we going to see close combat? Yup, wow. Really well done by Esk. I love how he approached that sequence. He really outmaneuvered his opponent there. And are we going to see a double here? In a Rotom. Wow, okay. Yup, and now Esk is taking... A bit of an advantage in this game. Um, I really like how he approached that sequence, and Rotom is actually quite threatening here. Full switch plus Will O Wisp and even Hex um, going to do quite well. Uh, in fact, we might see the Vaporeon just stay in and fire up a Wish just to try and get a Volt Switch and get out of this awkward spot. But let's wait and see what happens. Um, okay. Looks like HG's taking some time. After that sequence, I can't blame him. He got outplayed up there. Um, but his spot is still not awful. I'd say that it's not favorable anymore, though. We're going to see a Volt Switch. Yep. All right. Nicely done there. Um, we're probably going to see the Steelix. No, no, not Steelix, but Incineroar. But you have to remember that it's at 47%, and there's a chance to the volley's quicker. Well, can I kill it? Because Flamethrower is likely the only attack. It can chip it. Or, well, chipping might not sound right, but... Flamethrower, when you flare blitz into it, then it kills it's essentially double down. But I don't think that's favorable for either player. I think you want to preserve the Silvali for the Vanillax. So perhaps you get a parting shot into Vaporeon, which would have been better. But we're going to see Slowbro instead of all that. So now maybe Esk will try and um, get the Fire Blast that he should have before on it. And he is for 38%, meaning that it would have killed before, yeah. But that's okay. He's gotten himself into a fair position via other means since then. So that's something. Um, question is what we're going to see here. This is a toxic Slowbro. But it's not in a timer quite yet. Well, it's always on a timer, but it's not on a directly threatening timer. Given it's at 82%, and this Silvali can't do more than 10% damage with Flamethrower. Um, I imagine we'll see a Pining Shot into Vaporeon. However, we could very well see Vika Volt. But Vika Volt's at full, yeah. So, I mean, it'll do about 40% with Fire Blast, if that is to play. About 20 some odd percent with Scald, like 20, 21. Hmm. All right, so now it looks like HG is taking his time. The Corian's going to come in on a slack off, interestingly enough. Um, I don't know if I agree with that because he regenerated off, but I mean, the 8% damage or whatever with Flame Fire Blast plus wasting a PP. I mean, I guess the PP doesn't really matter, but it's not. It's not. It's a small detail like that. I'm going to pause and just get PM. I'll be back for one turn. Okay, I'm back. We're going to see a Rotom come in on a Heal Bell. All right, so that's a nice development. That means that HG is in a bit more control of the situation than I initially thought. Yes, he could stop the bleeding with Toxic, so that is good for him. Um, now, my position is pretty neutral, but I'm kind of curious to see if this Rotom can really do much instead of Vaporeon. I mean, it's going to do like 40%-ish with Volt Switch. Yeah, 39%, so that's kind of pathetic. I mean, the means of being the Vaporeon are Vanillox, and that is taking Stealth Rock every time, as well as taking... Um, potential Scald here, or are we going to see Wish? Wish probably is going to come out. Yep, all right, so now to Vaporeon, just wish protect. Um, whereas this just clicks um, freeze dry. Now, the question is, is it worth going to the Silvali Steel here? Because you do eat the freeze dry and live, but I think the Vaporeon health is more necessary at this point in time. Because then Steelix becomes threatening, Slowbro becomes threatening, etc. Hmm. Well, all right. Now, HG's taking some time to think it through. He's still at 270 seconds, though. Pardon me, I'm just changing my position. You might hear my voice a bit differently. Hopefully not. But, um, yeah. So, it looks as if... Okay, fuck it. I'm back. But, um, it looks as if we're gonna see a freeze dry here from Esk. And the Safari still is gonna come in, which is... living, but then dies to hell. Okay, so... Might have been a roll, but that is like backbreaking for HT. I think Ash is now pretty much going to take this game as the Vaporeon is now basically dead. It's at 30% to come in. Well, it wants to take Stealth Rock damage. And what is it going to... I guess it could wish up on the Slowbro, but like, really? 
Now, if I am asked, I just go out to the, mm, probably the ditto, honestly. Although you could arguably justify just about anything here. You don't really need any single Pokemon besides maybe Vanillax. Honestly, Blizzard picks every time. Freeze Dry picks every time now, too. So, yeah, that's something. Um, I think we'll see a U-turn here from HG. If I had to guess, Slowbro... I don't like the Slowbro at all. Because you know what that means? That means that the Vaporeon can use Wish. Which really opens up a hole that you didn't want to open up for HT. Because now this game could draw out. And he could potentially outlast you with the Vaporeon single-handedly. It is true that he only has 8 heal belt PP. And Slowbro can kind of live forever. And Rotom can annoy it. But, like, I don't know if that's going to come into play necessarily. Just given how... um. Oddly structured in terms of long-term gameplay, as his team is. Hmm. Let's wait and see. Okay, that's the aforementioned Vaporeon. Down to 24% after hail, but then back up to 30. I imagine we see Slowbro switch here, but we could see a toxic? Yeah, I guess, but like, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this is why I didn't like Slowbro. I feel like you just, um, you fodder to the ditto. Okay. Wish. So, you protect. And now something dies to Freeze Dry, probably. But at least this is healthy now. But I guess Freeze Dry picks enough to where it's fine. Um, I think that the Pissimian may live the Freeze Dry, but then it'll die if there are a couple of rocks turns. It's gonna be like 76 before rocks. After rocks now, rather. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that works out. No way you stand with the Vaporeon here. Unless you do eat and you want to, like, Scald Burn, protect stuff. I guess that's a win condition. Anyway, he fodders the Torterra, which was burnt initially, but no longer burnt. I guess that's of note, although he didn't really use it, and so it really wasn't of note. We're going to see Pissimian here for sure. Beakable. Oh, okay. Maybe this is a trade that he views as worthwhile to bait Eskin the choking and throwing this away and potentially winning with the Vaporeon. But nope, Eskin's going to fall for it. He's going to go to the Steelix, take the 34% from the Bug Buzz, revealing that he's likely a max attack adamant or close to it variant without much special defense investment. Bug Buzz is going to 2 it KO. Now we'll probably see the Incineroar. No, Vanillax. What? Why would you do that? I guess that's okay, because Vaporeon is... No, oh, Vaporeon's a full. Hmm. I guess he's going to... Um, Ditto plus Slowbro can beat Vaporeon easily enough. Fair, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't risk this, even if it's not a roll. Now you Blizzard, right? Yeah, Blizzard. Okay, that does 29. And now you're at 1% after South Rocks. Like, and you could Blizzard again here, actually. Yeah, that might be the play. You Blizzard on the Wish, then you go out to something and protect. But, like, you want to have this thing on and locked in the Freeze Dry, honestly. So you, I, I think Incineroar is the play there, and just click the Fire move. And you just click clicking it until Vaporeon kills you, and then you Freeze Dry, and you get a kill. But I guess Esk saw it differently. Anyway, we're going to see the Wish here from Vaporeon as the Slowbro comes in, which is okay. Um... Probably see a protect here, but we could see a scald. Slowbro can't do more than like 10 or 12 percent, so this was fire blast anyway. But toxic is annoying because it forces the field bell. Anyway, scald on a non toxic and slack off. So that's a good turn for HG, especially considering the toxic and hail is going to rack up on the slowbro, leaving it at 75 damage after the slack off to pretty much fall 74 percent rather. Hmm. Another Scald, and a Toxic. Okay, good play. So now, question time. Do you go Vanillax or Rotom here? I think you have to go one of them. Ditto. Is he predicting a Scald or a Heal Bell? Yeah, that's a pretty obvious Heal Bell to me. I mean, do you go for Heal Bell of your own, I guess? That could work. Or do you just, like, wish? I guess you could wish. But, like, what does that accomplish? You can't pass Wish to Vanilla, so you let it get so goddamn low. Game would have been pretty good if you could, but 
Nah, it didn't lot last time, which really didn't make much sense to me. You force yourself into a blizzard for you start 50-50 that you literally only felt self-clicking blizzard, and it let the Vaporeon in for free. But anyway, we see the heal bell, so at least the um, Slubber is a bit more free. But now, what's coming to this Vico Vault? Are we just going to fodder off the Rotom or Incineroar here? I imagine that's a potential play. Um, it is true that we probably could... Um, hmm. He probably could. Fodder and Sinnoh are likely the least useful remaining, given that he didn't use it initially to pivot into Vika Vault, so I guess he doesn't really have many plans for it to be integrated into this endgame plan, so let's wait and see how that goes. All right, no ask is taking time, although HG's done to 180, so neither is totally off the timer. <laughs> hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm just checking Snapchat, waiting for this turn. It looks like Esk is taking more time. He he does heal bells again to let this die. Oh, Thunderbolt, okay. And that's fine, too. I thought he might want to save this, but anyway, now that Vanellix comes in for what seems to be the last time, um, Free Stray doesn't kill. You know why. But Blizzard does. But Blizzard doesn't do a kill of Vaporeon. I think he might freeze dry, though. Mm. How is he beating the Vaporeon? I this game plan this game plan from Ask is something I can't approve of. He made some really good plays with that Incineroar and the U turn earlier, and I feel like since then he's kind of been pretty dry, pretty flat, and he didn't really play in optimal fashion in the long haul. Well, let's see if he can somehow pull it out. I think that you just fought her off the vehicle bolt here. I mean, what do you need it for? I guess um, HG scared that the Rotom can beat the Vaporeon 1v1, but I don't think that's the case. You're one skull away, and you've got Wish, Protect Heal Bell, and it's not doing over half to you. If it was permanent hell, it might be a different story, honestly, but it's not, so... Hmm. I really think we're just going to see this if we go out stay in here. But let's wait and see. HG is down to 90 seconds, so. But I think quick, but. Hmm. I'm going to pause till the next turn. I just got to see something. So we are going to see the Vaporeon on a freeze dry, which doesn't really add up to me. I feel like the Vaporeon was the win condition, but now it looks like Ask is just going to walk away with this game. I don't really think I agree. I think that the Vaporeon Skull kills the Rotom from fifty to, from forty percent, and from there you clean up with the Vaporeon with Heal Bell. Unless you were worried about PP because Wisp and Toxic, but like they don't live long enough to where you have to use all eight Heal Bell, and the Slowbro can't threaten you. And I guess the Incineroar maybe gets like an SD on a Wish or Protect, but like, I don't think you allow that. I don't know. I guess maybe you just thought it was too much and it overwhelmed the Vaporeon, but I think that preserving that was not the right play. And I think that Ash played for the choke and he got it, but maybe I don't know the calcs. I, I'm not going to really call this a choke per se, but it's not something I necessarily agree with here. And it looks like we're going to see game three though, which is neat. Yeah, it's just got 60 seconds left. I think S just stays in here and clicks freeze dry. Knockoff is the move of choice. Can knockoff win? No way, right? Slowbro is a bit chipped. Incineroar is a bit chipped. Actually, hmm. Do you go Slowbro here 
and regenerate up. I thought Slowbro was a bit healthier. This could be annoying in hindsight, but it's a Clubberberry Slowbro, right? Um, or is it Z? Either way, you might be able to live a knockoff and just kind of spam slack off, and that seems to be what he's doing. Because there's no way this is a salt vest. Oh, right, it's a jack button. I'm sorry. So, yeah, this probably takes like 35, 40, maybe. Maybe probably 35, mid 30s, I have to guess. And just slack off. So, crit is the one condition here. If he crits, he could win. And we're going to have to see. I think she has no choice but to spam knockoff. Ah, oh, okay, he could go Vika Vault. But, hmm. Hmm. Actually, Vika Vault might win the game. Hmm, this is a bit more complicated than I thought. I don't know. Um, do you sw double switch here to Incineroar if you ask? I feel like that's actually a really plausible option. Um, wait, is this in range of... Yeah, okay, so what you do here if you ask is you... Hmm. Okay. Um, interesting. I think you ought to fight a Rotom here now. You fire Rotom, then you go to, um, I guess you go on Cinderor, and you click Earthquake. Hmm. Might come down to 50-50s if he doesn't do it that way. We'll have to wait and see. A bit complicated now. It's yet 20 seconds. That's get 210. I guess that not, um, keeping on the Vaporeon makes a bit more sense now that I think about it, because the Vico Volt is a pretty well here, but I still feel as if, um, Vaporeon could have won. Hmm. Let's down to one fifty now. Um, knockoff should kill. It did even less than I thought. Yeah, it kills. And now what? I wait. Wait. Okay, that's fine. But you can lose if you're um facing Gonk Shot on the um Kasimian now, which is why I don't really agree with that. I feel as a Fodering Road almost better. But okay. So you pretty much force him to pick one Pokemon to one worth. So you kill a Pissimian here, and he goes Vikavol, or you kill a Vikavol here, he goes Pissimian after. Earthquake, okay, so now you just Flare Blitz or whatever, right? But then can knock off kill after the Flare Blitz? Oh, Z, um, if it's Z, it's no way it's Z knockoff. It's probably Groundium. Um, I think you Flare Blitz here, and then you lose to knockoff. Yeah, I don't really agree with that. I think Ash just mismanaged this sequence, this prolonged sequence overall. We're going to see HG down to 10 seconds. That's up to 120. I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. Both of them attack here. Incineroar kills the Vika Vault, and then Pissimian probably wins the game. Ash at 120. HG clicks his move already at 10. Ash heading down to 90, probably. Any second now we'll see the move, but it looks like HG is going to end up winning this at 2-0, if I understand this correctly. Yep, Ask is down to 90 now. Hmm. Flavlets? 20%. Now 3% in Cinderella. Does die to knock off. Ash says good game well played, and it looks like HG is going to win. Um, don't really agree with all of the planning there, but I guess it worked out. But yeah, HG's going to take this at 2-0 and he's going to advance, making his playoff prospects look really good. Anyway, that's some Finch piece.